Hi, everybody. Today we're going for a hike at the Chumash Indian Museum in Lang Ranch. The Chumash Indian Museum is located in Thousand Oaks, California, and it is an awesome little beginner hiking trail. It's not very far and it's very level. The other nice thing about it is it's nice and wide and smooth. So if you're coming out here with a hiking stroller or young kids, it's a nice, wide and safe trail. Now, the two things to remember when you come out here are there are two big rules in this area other than all the normal hiking rules. Rule number one, they do not allow mountain bikes. Rule number two, they do not allow dogs. And we're going to show you why in a little bit. Now the land the Chumash Indian Museum sits on actually has a very interesting uh, historical background. Not only was it owned by the Lang family, which was one of the original settling families of Thousand Oaks, but it also has a rich history in uh, Chumash, Native American history as well. You can see the museum back there and the sign here indicates you go to the museum or the trail village. The trail village is going up that way and you're going to wrap around behind the museum or you can go straight into the museum. If you are here, be sure to check out the museum. They have limited hours, so check to make sure they are going to be open before you come. It's only a few bucks, but it's definitely worth checking out. Up in front of the museum, there is a native plant garden and there's signage here by every plant showing you what the plants are so you can figure out what you're going to be looking at as you're going down the trail. Since we're here during the COVID shutdown, the museum is unfortunately closed. We're gonna give you a tour of the land around the museum because even just up close to the museum has a lot of really interesting stuff. So if you are here on a day where they are closed, there's still a lot to see around the museum and the trails here are great. Now proceeding onto the trail, there are a lot of rattlesnakes you will see here, and I have actually seen rattlesnakes here several times, so it is something to be aware of. Now when you proceed onto the actual trail itself, you're gonna hike up along here and wrap around behind the museum to hit the main trail. Coming to the back of the museum, you'll be presented with a fork in the trail and you can either go this way or this way. And really either way works. They both converge a little bit later on down the line. This way you're gonna be going through the beautiful oak grove and this way you're gonna be cutting just above it. Now, both of these trails, one of the big benefits of this trail system is they're all very easy trails. This is great for a beginner and these are all actually even appropriate for a hiking stroller or something along those lines. The one thing. Now something you're almost guaranteed to see, especially if you're here on a day where there's not a lot of action going on is deer. And I'm gonna to try to zoom in here the best I can. So you can see those two deer down there. At the beginning, I mentioned that they don't allow mountain bikes and they don't allow dogs. And this, I think, is probably the reason why. There's a lot of really pretty stuff out here, including deer. And deer get spooked off by mountain bikes and they get terrified by dogs. And you're almost guaranteed to see deer here almost any time you hike, as long as there's not a big crowd. So if you come out on a weekend, on a morning, and there haven't been school groups, you're pretty much guaranteed to see these guys. These deers aren't very skittish. They're pretty comfortable around people. You get close to them, they will take off. These look like very young ones. There's an extremely young one in the back over there. So now that we've seen those deer, we're gonna start hiking through the oak grove. And this is right behind the museum. Right over here on the left, you can actually see the deer still in the background over there. There's a little platform and this is where they hold special events. And they actually have a powwow back here. And we're gonna follow the trail right there. It's gonna cut right back through this oak grove. Now, the neat thing about these oak groves is these oak groves are the survivors of several brush fires, even one very recent. The ones here closest to the museum didn't really get hit much by the recent fires, but as we hike back further into the canyon, you're going to see more and more fire damage. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get back further into the canyon. Now, we're still hiking along, and uh, the deer seem to be following us. Every time I've been back here, if there's not a lot of other people, they, uh, they seem to be real curious little critters, and they will follow you as long as you're quiet and walk slow and don't make a lot of noise and scare them.
Moving just a little bit further down the trail, there is this area right here. It's got a chimney and some pieces of farming equipment. And what's uh, real interesting about this area here is this is actually where the foundation of the Lang Ranch home was. And uh, kind of to give you a little bit of perspective here, that was the chimney there for the home. And this fenced area was roughly the footprint of the entire home. And this was a family that settled a huge portion of the Conejo Valley. So for their time, they would have been one of the wealthy settlers of the area and their entire home was only about that big. So now leaving the Lang home, we're gonna continue on down the trail. Up there is the paralleling trail that we talked about on the way in. They merged together a little further down, but we're gonna keep going down the trail here, further back into the oak groves. So we're now entering an area that was burned by the fires and you can see in a lot of these areas, the wood chips on the ground and that is actually evidence of the trees or the portions of the trees that didn't make it along with these pieces here. Now this land back here is managed by the Conejo Recreation and Park District and what was pretty neat about these trees was these trees were all burned and most of them looked like they were pretty well dead. And a tree service came out, a professional tree service, and actually came and assessed the trees. And what they did was they started cutting each branch back to get the dead growth out of them. And they cut them back to the point where they found live growth. And any trees where they found live growth in, they tagged them, the trees were not removed, and they were allowed to regrow. And we're about two years later now, and you can see the trees are actually doing very well and the remaining trees are coming back. We were very fortunate not to lose all the trees back here, and a lot of them are actually doing real well and growing back. Next fork in the road is this one right here. There's a little arrow indicating to the left. You don't actually have to go to the left. You can go read the right or left. They're all gonna lead to the same place. There's just more good stuff to see this way. It's gonna take you right past the playing field and into the local old Chumash village that they've built. You can see here in this tree some of the, the work that was done. You notice the way that it's a large branch and there's only really tiny stuff coming off of it. And this whole section back here was burned. And that's a good example of one of these trees where they cut the tree back to the point where the tree was live and then they allowed the other parts of the tree to regrow. And you can see we were very lucky. This was denser, but we still managed to retain a lot of the oak trees in this area. So a little further down the trail, there's the uh, little game field. And the game field is pretty neat. If you're with a school group here, they'll actually bring the kids out here and play Chumash games. And one of the more popular games that they play here is the hoop and pole game. And that one, you roll a hoop and you try to throw a spear through it. It was a way for the kids to practice hunting in the Chumash villages. And then there were also some smaller games, stick dice and things like that, that were really popular that they do teach kids if you come out here on any sort of a school or educational tour. Proceeding a little further down the trail, you hit the Chumash Village. And this is another neat area where they do do some interpretive stuff here. They've got benches and a small fire pit. And you can see here, these also were a victim of the fires, the Chumash Ops, which were the structures that the Chumash lived in. So you can see we've got a completed one here and they're working on constructing two new ones. So let's go inside one of these things, check it out, show you how these things work. It was a pretty ingenious solution they had here. They would make these out of reeds and they were very actually strong structures. The Chumash were not nomadic, they stayed put. So they could build a more robust structure like this that was more of a permanent structure. And you can see here in the middle on the top, there's a hole. Now it looks like they're still working on this one, but the neat thing about these holes is you could heat these structures. So you would generally here in the middle, you could set up a fire, the smoke would rise and exit right out through that hole. Now, if it was raining, they could take a deer skin or some sort of an animal skin and cover that hole and prevent the water from coming in. So now leaving the village, we can continue up the trail. The trail continues this way, further down into the canyon and further into some of the oak groves out here. There's some additional evidence of the fire damage that came through here. When the trees were removed, the really only segments of trees that were removed were segments that would be considered dangerous to hikers. So things like this were left in place. Here you can see some other chunks of that same tree over on the other side of the trail. And the further back we get in the canyon, we get into more and more and more fire damage. You come into here and you can see huge sections of tree have been removed. 
and pieces in here have been damaged and burned really substantially. And looking further out where they didn't have to remove things due to safety concerns for hikers, you can really start seeing how extensive a lot of the damage was. Looking up here, you can see an entire fallen tree through everything else. Way back there. You can also see the damage in the char on the trunks of all these trees here. Now something to look out for when you're hiking out here is trees like this that are overcoming the trail. And what I've noticed, the reason I'm pointing this out is I've noticed underneath them, a lot of times I've found owl pellets. And what owl pellets are is when an owl swoops down and eats a critter, usually a mouse or a rodent, it can't digest the whole thing. So it actually essentially barfs back up a little pellet, they're usually about this big, that contains the fur and the bones and undigestible parts of that rodent. Now it sounds kind of gross, but it's also kind of fascinating because if you take the time to dissect one, you can actually figure out what that thing ate. Now, the reason you find them usually over these, you'll find them usually everywhere else too. <laughs> They're easier to find on the roads though, because you can see them and we're hiking on them. But the reason why they sometimes hang out over the roads is because this is an easy place for them to actually spot the rodent. When the rodent runs across the road, they don't have to pick it up through the brush. They can swoop down and get it. So look along the trail, especially when you get further back into these canyons for owl pellets, you just might get lucky and find one. Now we've stopped here and we're looking over the seasonal stream bed here. So this thing really only runs when there's rain and in the winter time, but it does run pretty good. And there is actually a little culvert over here. Now the reason we're stopping here is because there used to be a bridge in here. It's gone now, I think the fire got it, but this was really a very popular place to do filming. And really even more recently, the History Channel's done a bunch of stuff back here. Uh, one thing to note, which is kind of a funny story, is if you've ever seen the show on History Channel called Ultimate Warrior, they would take two warriors from two different eras in time and they would pit them against each other to see who would win. And it was right back in this area, they filmed Pirate versus Ninja. And who doesn't wanna know who wins? Now I'm not gonna spoil that one for you, you can look it up if you want, but, what they did was they had a fight here, there was a bridge, and then here's the funny part. They had the fight, they fought, they ran this way, and they jumped through some bushes. And they popped out the other side of the bushes on the beach. And the beach they filmed that was actually down somewhere in Malibu, and we're in Thousand Oaks. So magically somewhere over there, there's a portal, or through the magic of Hollywood, or both, if you jump through the bushes, you land at the beach, I think. Now we're coming into where the section of the trail ends, and this is a real cool tree. This is my favorite tree here. And you can see this one was burned, I mean, really burned. And coming up to the knot here, I'm gonna go through the knot. Hey, look, a lizard. All right there, we're gonna go through the knot into the tree. You actually see right up to the top of the tree, coming back out. I mean, that's how burned this tree is. And you come right over here and this tree is still trying its darndest to make a comeback. You can see all the new growth that's coming out of that tree. Even though the inside's completely burned out, it's still trying to make a comeback. And that's how resilient these oak trees are to fire. Now part of the reason they're so resilient to fire is you can see here the bark. And this is a great example. The bark is very thick and the bark protects the core of the tree. The bark is just the skin. It's what's protecting the inside of the tree from fire. And the inside of the tree is what carries all the nutrients and whatnot up and down. And what's amazing with this is even the inside burned, but there's still enough in there to get those nutrients and what it needs inside that tree out so it can start pushing out new growth. Now coming to the very end of the trail, and this doesn't actually have to be the end of your hike. It's just gonna be the turning around point for us are these rocks and you can walk around them. There's kind of a circle. Now these rocks have a name and everybody calls them Elephant Rock. And I've heard a bunch of different stories about how they got that name. The Lang kids used to call it Elephant Rock. More modern kids started calling it Elephant Rock. And the one story that I've heard is that the Chumash called this rock, this rock, Elephant Rock. And here's the problem with that. 
the Chumash never would have seen an elephant. So there's no way the Chumash called this thing Elephant Rock, at least before um, Europeans got here, because they never would have actually seen or heard of an elephant before Europeans got here. So this thing couldn't have been Elephant Rock according to the Chumash, possibly the Lion Kids, or even maybe more modern kids coming out here hiking and building forts. But this is Elephant Rock. Now this will be our turnaround point for today. We're gonna head back towards the visitor center, but this doesn't have to be the end of your hike if you don't want it to be. This little cut right here, runs right back into an entire other trail system, which comes up over this ridge, connects it with some of the fire roads, and you can actually take those trails all the way over the hill to Simi Valley and pop out the other side. So now let's turn around, let's head back, let's see if we see anything else on the way back. As you hike, you'll probably notice these. This is a pretty neat little thing they've been doing. It has a little stand here that you would put your camera on. You rest your camera or phone there and snap a picture, and then you can upload it to your choice of social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and tag the Chumash Indian Museum, and that way they can track the regrowth of this area. So I guess while we're here, let's do it. We made it a little bit further down the trail and we actually found a owl pellet. And I'm about to gross my little hiking partner here, my daughter out. I'm gonna pick it up, kind of show you it. When you get into it, all that little something that looks like twigs, a lot of that stuff is bone. And what's holding it together is fur. So that's the fur of whatever unlucky, unfortunate critter got gobbled up and then the bones as well. Just came upon another owl pellet here a little further down the trail. I don't know how I missed these on the way out, but I'm glad I'm seeing them on the way back. And I'm gonna guess here, based on these little, the bands and the colorations right there, if you can see them, that this was a, uh, this was an unlucky squirrel that uh, became owl dinner. Now coming back down the trail, we've hit the Chumash village here again, and the trail right over there, that one, that's what we came up. On the way back, we're gonna go the higher road, which is this one. You can really go either one. We'll just see a little bit different scenery on this one going back. Then a little later, you're gonna hit another intersection and the same thing applies here. You can really go either way. Every trail is gonna head you back towards home base there. And that's the great thing about this trail is it's pretty much impossible to get lost. If you're hiking one direction, you're going out, hiking in the other direction, you're going back. If you head up any one of these side trails, you're still gonna get back to where you parked. And as we approach that next fork, we noticed over here in the distance, I'm gonna try to zoom in on them again. A large buck. You can see his antlers there. We're gonna to try to get a little closer. We're not gonna hike off trail, but we're gonna see if we can get a little closer on the next trail down to him and get a little better shot of him. So he was just down there. We may get lucky and see a few more on the way back. This is generally where I see him is up by the center. And now we're gonna continue our hike. You can see the museum off in the distance and we'll wrap things up. So that wraps up our hike here behind the Chumash Indian Museum. We hope you enjoyed this hike and had a good time with us. And I hope you come out and check it out for yourself. Please remember to bring those 10 essentials, all the things that you need to keep yourself safe. I've got a whole video on that linked down below that you can check out on my other channel, the Budget Outdoor Adventure channel. So be safe out there, have fun. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got lots more cool stuff coming your way.